Hi, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to deal with uh, part two of uh, software design. This is Balu here, and uh, I represent uh, SP Tech Private Limited, Bangalore. Okay, so what do we deal in this uh, particular session? Uh, we are going to discuss about uh, design process in more detail, and we are also going to going to look into architectural design process, and we shall also see what is system structuring. and the various uh, types of system structuring which could be your repository model client server model and layered model so now we have already discussed about uh, design models in my previous session now a design model uh, could consist of data design it could consist of architectural design interface design and procedural design we know what is an uh, data design uh, the outcome of a data design is generally to produce a data structure and the outcome of an architectural design is to actually show us the relationship among the structural elements or we can put it in other way the subsystems are actually defined in the architectural design and then we move on to the interface design where we talk about the human computer interaction and finally we land up in the procedural design where we talk about the procedural description of software components which could be in terms of a data flow diagram or a structure chart but uh, what we shall do here today is we shall talk more about the design process and see how exactly an architectural uh, design is actually performed now the design process itself is a lengthy process in fact the success of uh, the uh, you know the outcome of a software delivery depends upon how well your design is there so the design basically defines the success or the failure of a product or a software good design you get a good product bad design you get a bad product as simple as it is now here initially when you start a design you basically do something called as an informal design outline so this will actually give me the outline of that particular design or the boundary of the design as and when you add more details you get into an informal design but in the informal design stage also you will not have an perfect design which can be manipulated into software but during the informal design stage you still get more and more detail as the project elaborates and you come into a formal design where you have the uh, design which can be actually converted into a finished design product now you can see that the all these are linked with each other with having a proper feedback from one stage to another stage now this is an uh, simple example of uh, how a uh, design is actually performed now we know that to do a design what is the basic input we require we require a basic input called requirement specification now from the requirement specification we start performing the design activities now the design activities are sequential in nature and you can see that there are multiple number of uh, design activities and the outcome of each activity is shown below which is nothing but a specification so once you have requirements the first thing you are going to do is architectural design so what we do in architectural design is we broadly identify the subsystems now once we identify the uh, subsystems so we get something called as an system architecture then from the subsystems which which we have identified we move on to abstract specification what is an abstract specification we actually specify the constraints of the subsystem and define what each subsystem is supposed to do from there we get something called as software specification so you know that the system architecture in fact becomes an input to your abstract specification then we head on to the uh, interface design where we try and identify what are the various interfaces which is actually uh, being connected between two different subsystems and how are they interrelated to each other so the outcome of that would be an interface specification then we design the components where we define what services each subsystem is supposed to perform and that gives me the component specification from there we head on to the data structure design where we define the arrays we define the table structures we define the database management system etc that gives me the data structure definition and finally we land up in the algorithm design where all your services are actually put into a process using an algorithm which can be called as an algorithm specification then later on we convert this algorithm into a programming model we use a standard programming language to convert that algorithm into a working program so this is the basic uh, sequential structure of how design is actually performed in software engineering 
Now, in architectural design, there are three different activities which are very important. So, we call them as system structuring, control modeling and modular decomposition. Now, what do you mean by uh, system uh, structuring? We have actually dealt with this. System structuring basically means decomposition of the main system into many subsystems. Now, when you define an architecture of a system, you just don't define a system. You actually have to define what are the various subsystems which make up that main system. And defining the subsystems is called as system structuring. And once you do that, then we have to do something called as control modeling. So control modeling is to identify control relationship between parts of the system. So this control modeling and modular decomposition, we will try to you know understand this in my next video series. But in this session, we shall more focus on what is system structuring, which basically means decomposing the main system into number of subsystems. Okay, now here I have given you in this particular slide, this slide exactly what is the meaning of your system structuring. Now you can see here system structuring basically deals with decomposing the system into interacting subsystems. The architectural design is normally expressed as a block diagram presenting an overview of the system structure. Now have a look at this uh, particular diagram. Now this is the uh, system structuring for an ATM. ATM is anytime money or automated teller machine. Now when you break down the ATM machine into number of subsystems, you get these many number of subsystems. Actually there are multiple number of subsystems here. I have only considered a few. For example, there could be a subsystem called as a card reader, there could be a subsystem called as a printer and there could be a subsystem called a modem etc. Now please understand that each of this subsystem has a predefined functionality. That is what is being mentioned here in this particular slide. The architectural design is normally expressed as block diagram presenting an overview of system structure. May also develop more specific models showing how subsystems share data are distributed interface with each other. Now in this diagram you can see that the ATM system is broken down into number of subsystems and we are also seeing how these subsystems are actually interconnected with each other. Now you know that the main system which is your central processor of an ATM is actually connected to multiple number of subsystems and each subsystem is connected to this main system through a bus. Now bus is nothing but a group of wires which are actually connected from a subsystem to the main system and there are some data which is actually passed in and out from the main system to the subsystem. Now this concept of breaking down the entire system into number of subsystem is called as system structuring. Now uh, when you do system uh, structuring you have to follow three models which are very important. So we call them as the uh, repository model the client server model and the layer model. Now we shall see one by one what is a repository model and where do we use it and we will also look into what is a client server model and a layered model. So first we shall see what is an repository model. Now we already we have seen in system structuring that a system can be broken down into number of subsystems. Now what is the idea of breaking down the number of subsystems is these subsystems interact with each other. And when they interact with each other, naturally I basically share some data. Now, in this uh, I have give slide, I have given you two diagrams. The first diagram on the left hand side, we have subsystems maintaining its own database. And on the right hand side, we have subsystems sharing the central database. Now, first we shall concentrate on the diagram which is on the left side, where the subsystems maintaining its own database. Now, I have three subsystems here that is subsystem 1, subsystem 2 and subsystem 3. Now they interact with each other but one difference you have to understand here is you have to that particular subsystem which are actually interacting with each other they have their own local database. Okay, That means this data if this subsystem has to interact with this subsystem that is SS1 has to interact with SS3 it has to interact through the database that means the data will be transferred to the database and from the database the, again the database will be trans again the record from the database will be transferred to the SS3. So this is what you mean by a uh, subsystem maintaining its own database. But this becomes a tedious process if the number of subsystem increases. So there what we then what we have to do is we have to come out with a solution where you keep the database in a centralized fashion. 
That means you keep the database in a central place and ask all the subsystems to basically communicate with the central database. Then we call that as an central database subsystem model, which means that all the subsystems which are actually communicating with the database will be communicating in one particular database which is actually located in the center of the entire software system. That means all the subsystem will basically share a same central database. Now this particular model will certainly help for those kind of system where there is lot of data to be shared. That means if there is a voluminous data to be shared, it is always a good idea to put all the data in a central place and that data can be actually shared by multiple number of subsystems. Now this repository model where you have uh, an, a subsystem which basically shares uh, the data in a central place have got some advantages and disadvantages. So what could be the advantages as you must have actually guessed by this time, backup, recovery and security activities are centralized. So now in this case suppose whatever data is there in this particular database, I need to backup only this particular uh, data at given intervals. That means if there is any loss of data, I can still get back the data from my backup database. But when I look into this particular model, uh, if I have to take a backup, I have to take the backup of all the three databases, which means it consumes more time and it also consumes more resources. So one advantage of having a centralized database would be my backup and recovery and security activities are centralized. And by doing so, I can always say that I have an efficient way to store large amounts of data. But there is a flip side on the uh, model as well and they are called as disadvantages. So what is the disadvantages? All subsystems must agree on a repository data model. That means, see now, subsystems generally could be in heterogeneous nature, which means they do not uh, they are not necessarily homogeneous. They come from a different platform. They come from a different operating system. In that scenario, it is not easy for all the subsystem to agree on a common database. That could be one of the uh, flip side of a uh, repository model with a shared database. Now the next important model in system structuring would be the client server model. So as the name in, in itself indicates, a client server model is a combination of a client and a server. Now considering that the whole uh, uh, system which basically consists of number of subsystems here, I need a, sub, I need a system where the client will be able to uh, you know, look into the video, the client will be able to browse the website and the client will be able to actually uh, share the printer resources. In that case, I will define three subsystems, one subsystem for video, one subsystem for a, uh, browsing the website and the another subsystem for sharing the printer. And we'll call these subsystems as server. We call them as a video server and a web server and a print server. Now the clients basically connect to these servers. Now even though the arrows are showing like this where the client one is connected to the video server, it does not necessarily mean that the client one only has to contact the video server. The client one can always have the link with other servers as well. That means the client has got complete access to all the servers. That means any client can access any server over an internet. So this is a typical example of a client server model where client is a requester of a service. He is trying to request a service and the server is actually a provider of a service. Now this model is called as a client server model. Now the last model in system structuring would be something called as a layered model. Now as the name itself uh, indicates, the layered model means the subsystems are divided into number of layers. Now if you take any web application today, the any web application would have three layers in common. We call them as a presentation layer a business layer and a data access layer. Now what is a presentation layer? The presentation layer is nothing but a user interface layer. Now this is the layer which the user interacts with the application. Now basically the user interacts with the application using a browser and that browser would basically be the presentation layer for the user. Then comes the business layer. The business layer is a layer where actually the business rules are defined. Now uh, there could be business objects here, there could be the rules of business defined here and that comes in your business layer and finally you have an data access layer where you get connected to the database. So the entire uh, system which is a combination of multiple subsystems is broken down as 
presentation layer, business layer and data access layer. Doing this way, it is very easy to actually split the project into number of small modular systems. Thank you so much for uh, watching this uh, video. Do subscribe to our channel. I will see you at the next uh, video series. Till then.